Welcome back to the Culture Base Podcast. I'm Dustin. He's Blake. And today we are starting a brand new series, podcast series, that is. It's not just a series of weird events, events, but we're doing a new podcast series called Are You Scalable? Mm-hmm. Episode 41 plus will be on this series. Cannot wait to dive into that with you. It is April 23rd in the year of our Lord, 2024. <laughs> I want to remind you that we're here to help leaders know what they're about, show where they're going, and develop a scalable team to get them there. I'm running through this because we have a lot of content to get through today, folks, and there's no time for humor, right? If you showed up for the podcast today for something funny, this is not the episode. We're all business today. I'm just kidding. Of course, it'll be funny. That's who we are. We can't help it. Uh, if you listen to an audio podcast platform and you're laughing along with us, I would love for you to leave a five-star review. It helps us get this content out further to folks like you who could uh, learn from it. If you're watching on YouTube, hello there. So glad that you're here. I'd love for you to give a thumbs up, not just digitally like you do on Zoom meetings, but actually hit the thumbs up button on YouTube and subscribe as well and ring the bell. It's a three in one motion. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. You're notified every time we drop new content uh, on the YouTubes. Lastly, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, we are there as well, at The Culture Base, B-A-S-E, coming to your screen right now. There it is. The, at The Culture Base, or you can find us at The Culture Base, B-A-S-E dot com. Click around there. Maybe you find yourself on our strategy page, and you're thinking, I would love a 30-minute chat with these fellows. You know what? Just for you, it's free. Go ahead on and uh, add that to your calendar. Hop on our calendar. Let's talk some strategery. All right, on to the show. Blake hasn't said a word. He's like, I'm not slowing this down. <clears throat> All right, so let's just set the tone for this series. Today is going to be a kind of an introduction to what we mean when we say, are you scalable? People hop from organization to organization in search of something, right? The ideal team culture exists somewhere out there in the ether. If that's the case, then there must be some kind of magic formula to its creation, sustainability, and more importantly, its scalability. The recipe for this seemingly unreachable utopia is easier to obtain than you think. But first, in order to solve the problem, we have to identify the problem. Are you scalable? Like, what do we mean when we ask the question, are you scalable? Yeah, that's that's the big question, because honestly, scalability is not one variable. And when we look at scalability, um, I want to say that business leaders probably think scalability equals this and there's one variable that they probably lean on more than they lean on other ones and i think when it comes to asking the question like are we scalable you've got to understand all aspects of scalability you've got to understand the different variables Um, otherwise you run the risk of being like many many businesses and organizations that thought they were scalable and ended up uh you know, flaming up and uh, burning out, you know, it's happened to a lot of businesses whose names were on fortune 500 at one point in time and are no longer around. So there is, there are so many aspects of scalability that we've got to look at. Um, We're going to dive into a little bit of scalability on one side before we jump into the other. Uh, I think it's important to understand all aspects because what we at the culture base are going to focus on has to first understand and run with this other side. Because if this other side isn't true, it doesn't matter what we focus on on the culture base because it it, do, it won't exist, right? Yeah. So uh, the first thing would be like the timing, the resources you have at your disposal. Um, is your product, is your service for today? Asking that question, because if it is not for today, and you're trying to sell horse and buggy and you're like, I think this is going to catch. Yeah. Or landline phone service. Yeah. It already caught. And then it is no longer here. Right. Like there are uh, many businesses that were in that, that, uh, industry that aren't even around anymore. That were flying cars. Not not quite yet. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Flying cars. Not quite yet. Jetsons have the idea. I'm running with it ready, but we're not there yet. So thinking through that's important. Your infrastructure, uh, do you have the right processes? Do you have the technology? Is, um, you know, what technology do you need? You don't need it all. 
but what does your industry need? What does your company need to go to the next level? And what a uh, software, there are a lot of softwares that are going to help with things. So thinking through your infrastructure is another part of the scalable variable, your, your business model, hmm. you have recurring revenue streams. Uh, how is automation implemented into your organization? And do you have the processes that can leverage the economy of scale in your business? Like you're, you're able to see how multiple one resource can hit multiple things. Like if you aren't thinking through those things, you may not be scalable. Okay. Yeah. If you're thinking through the processes too, like I'll just quickly add that, you know, we, we, we've done a couple episodes on processes before, but if, if your process cannot outlive just you alone, then it's not scalable. Yeah. That's an easy litmus test for you. If, if you were to no longer exist tomorrow, can that process continue or does it die with you? Yeah. That's a, that's an easy litmus test for that. Or even a mindset. And this one may kind of reach into a little bit of what the culture base focuses on, but like even a mindset on process, mm-hmm. no processes are ever complete. You know, the second law of thermodynamics talks about everything kind of burning out and fizzling out down to its whatever. Um, if your mentality is you create the right process and you don't have to worry about it and now it's scalable, you're wrong. And that's going to cause tons of issues in your organization. So it's not just, will it survive without you? Will it survive and continue to thrive without you? Um, I think another thing is your effective resource management as a company. So many companies go out from over investment, right? Like, oh, let's keep, let's buy this. Let's do this. Let's, um, you know, run because we'll be able to push our revenue in order to take care of all the expenses we're spending. The problem is, is we don't actually realize when we're doing that, how much we're spending. Hmm. We don't, we don't even know, like, I feel this at a deep level at times, even in my own personal finances, where I'm like, oh, you know, we probably only spend X amount of dollars on subscriptions until you run it. And you're like, holy crap, we are spending a disgusting amount of money on our subscriptions. And I'm paying for two or three of the same thing. You know, it's just, you don't pay attention to some of those things sometimes. And so having good effective resource management where you're managing your resources well, your financial backing and uh, even the leverage of your financial resources is, is in the right place to grow. You have the right amount of assets in place to grow because you, if you try to grow too quick, you know, they talk about growing too quick and fizzling out. If you try to grow too quick and you outpace your leverage and your money, you're going to fall flat on your face, even if it's growing upwards. Okay. You're just not able to manage and take care of, of the cash to get there. Uh, another one would be like agility and innovation. Is this a value that you have in a constant approach that you have within your organization? And you could say, well, what do I know? Like for us, we're electricians. What do, why would we be innovating anything? Well, that's the problem. If, if you don't have the mindset of, Hey, what can we do to create longevity in our in the field? Like for our team members, should we create our own tools that actually keep people off ladders so that there's longevity and productivity? And see, that's that's a mindset of agility and innovation. That's not that all electricians are going to be like that and should be like that. We're just pushing past things so that we have a scalable mindset in order to do that. Um, another thing would be just scalable sales and marketing plans. Are you taking the same approach and thinking you're going to get different results? Yeah. What got you there won't keep you there. Exactly. Exactly. So these are a lot of those different aspects that you've got to think about that are really permission to play in order to scale. Okay. You got to have the right funding in place. You got to have the right financial resources. You got to have the right product. Your product can't be something that the, the, uh, market isn't asking for or doesn't need. Okay. So if that's happening, you got to, going to have to reevaluate. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we want to focus on in this series, now that we've kind of established like, Hey, we, we recognize and realize there are a lot of different things that go into scalability. The problem is, is that none of the stuff that we've covered so far matters 
unless you have a team that can scale with it. And so during this series, we're going to be talking about things like, hey, does this does this team have a leader who sees all the pieces? Does your team have all the right people? Are those people connected to the right work? Do they have clarity on their purpose or are they constantly confused? Does the culture support growth and development at all levels or does it stifle it at some point? Is there a high focus on accountable communication or does that only apply to certain individuals? These are the things that we're going to get into because that that's what really is going to take all the other things that we've talked about so far. And that's what's going to allow you to be able to scale. Otherwise, it's just a great plan. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And that does take us to like, it's so easy to be like, yeah, but that won't happen to us. Or like, yeah, but if you have the right product, I think you can push past all those things. I I think Yahoo is probably the right product. I think Yahoo has the scalable product or had the scalable product. It started off with like web directory, but expanded rapidly into like first range of internet services. Remember, uh, you've got mail, right? I feel it without oh, that's AOL. That's, that's on me. But regardless, <laughs> well, where's AOL? Good point, right? Yeah. Um, you know, search engine news, like Yahoo got into a ton of things really quick and had a almost like an empty field to invest in and to really grow and establish what they are. Like its services were scalable. It was attracting millions of users worldwide. Cultural challenges. Yahoo's culture uh, was marked by frequent leadership changes, which means the vision keeps changing. Mm-hmm. That you can't means, do that. Which means the clarity on purpose that we just talked about yes. is, is super foggy. Yep, because when that happens, you start having tons of internal conflicts, lock, loss of focus on the innovation you should be focused on in that moment. Okay. Lack of focus is one of the biggest cripplers to scalability. And if you're constantly changing the focus, you're going to start having turnover um, and and your product development is never going to be finished. Okay. And they weren't finishing. So the company really struggled to like keep their top talent, as you can imagine, especially in a dot-com boom, when you have a lot of big names or new startups, like top talent was excited. And if you can't keep them engaged in the vision of where they're at, they're gonna leave, which led to a brain drain and a decline in morale at Yahoo. So because of all of this, and because this lack of focus and a team that was actually pushing and retaining Yahoo failed to capitalize on some really massive emerging trends like search engine technology. Okay. And um, even social media, like think about that. Social media has pushed pretty hard. Where is Yahoo in that? Now, now some people could be like, yeah, but like, did they need to be in that? Probably not, but they didn't, they didn't engage on any of that stuff. And whether Google has a social media platform, they're using it. Okay, so that's the that's the difference here is they weren't going on any of that stuff. This company, Yahoo, and you'll hear about this in business books and stuff, but they missed on one of the biggest opportunities, which was acquiring Google. Hmm. Yahoo was going to acquire Google for nothing. I think it was like fifty six million dollars. And then they had a second opportunity around like two hundred million today. Nope. Like, I, I'm pretty sure, didn't Yahoo even sell out to someone? I think I so. might be wrong on that. I think so. I feel like they did. Yeah, I'll check on it. Thanks, fact check me. Yeah. Um, but essentially, their failure to adapt to those things and have the right people and the right vision and the right focus led to them declining. Poorly. And so there's a great example of high product, high service, no focus, lack of team, lack of people. And again, they could have gone just as far as Google is today. So, yeah, did you find that out? I'm seeing all kinds of stuff. Maybe Verizon. Mm. Um, That's right. That's yeah, right. Verizon. Verizon. 
It's like a Verizon division or something. It's a division of Verizon. Yeah. It's like yeah. the Apollo group or something like that is what it's called. But gotcha. yeah, I mean, now I, when I think about Yahoo, like really the only thing that comes to mind to me is fantasy football. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just a regular consumer out here choosing which products to use. Like if I'm, if I'm going to look something up oh, online, yeah. I'm not going to go to Yahoo. Yahoo isn't my default homepage, yep. you know, uh, it's not my default browser search engine or any of those things. Like I have fantasy football leagues in there and even then it's a little bit clunky. Yeah. And I'd imagine that the highest Yahoo search engine is probably Google. Like the highest yeah. thing sought for, searched for in Yahoo is probably I'm like, so I remember sorry. when it was my main page and I don't I, remember. It's just funny because it. when I was fact checking you, I used Google. <laughs> oh, it's funny, but they're That's not amazing. the only people either. Like they're just one name in the list of a slew, like another B Xerox. Xerox. What's you say? Xerox. Xerox or Xerox. <laughs> oh. um, again, scalable technology, oh, scalable product. Like they dominated the photocopying industry with innovative copiers and printers. Uh, its products were scalable. They just absolutely had the ability uh, serving a wide range of customers from small to massive corporations. So they that's one of the bigger things about their scalability is they weren't just B2B, they're B2C, B2B. They're able to hit a whole gamut of people. So uh, cultural challenges, the Xerox ended up experiencing. Uh, they had, their organization was very bureaucratic and a lack of entrepreneurial spirit. So despite inventing many groundbreaking technologies like the graphical user interface and the mouse, <laughs> which is just like, they, that's crazy, right? <laughs> like they still though struggled to commercialize these innovations <laughs> um, initially or internally due to like risk aversion and the focus on traditional copier business. So their mentality is we have so much of the market, the market won't change enough that we really need to be pushing this stuff. That's a miss. Okay. Yeah. Again, you have the product, you even have the marketplace, but you made assumptions on the marketplace and, and didn't have the right team that would push things in such a way that you would get the response out of it. You stayed very bureaucratic, you weren't innovative with your team, you weren't, um, you weren't pushing innovation in the right way. So I think that's a missed opportunity. Like they famously failed to capitalize on um, the potential of the uh, personal computer revolution, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. they were basically able to get into the PC very early and they're like, no, like we just need to stay in our lane because our lane is good enough to stay in the market long term. They're not. Mm. And they weren't. They missed big areas. So despite developing advanced technology uh, at their research labs, uh, Xerox failed to bring these products to market eff effectively, okay, which allowed competitors like Apple and Microsoft to just dominate the industry. So this is where it's pushed Xerox to just way more of an outside role. Okay. So they missed really, really good stuff. You have anything on that? No, it's just funny to me that some of these companies whose name can be turned into from a, from a noun to a verb can miss it. Yeah. Um, you know, for so many years, people were using the term, let me, Xerox that for you. Mm -hmm. Very similar to like, let me grab a Kleenex. Yep. You know, stuff like that. And it's like, that's good. Man, you've become a verb and you can still miss it because you don't have the team to support it. Yeah. It's crazy to me. Anyway, man, that's good. That's really good. Uh, another name, and this is, we're going to dig more into this story later on in, with the culture base. So we're not going to dive too deep. But it's Nokia. Do you remember Nokia phones? Like we've talked about that on here before. Of course you you do. You know of Nokia phones because that was the phone. It was, right? the, phone. Like it was the mobile phone. Uh, just as 
the landline phone had that person that people knew the phone as, which I don't know who that is, but the mobile phone had that too. And it was Nokia, right? Like it was in what the matrix. They had the one Nokia uh-huh. phone. In it. Um, yeah. Brad Pitt and oceans used Nokia. Yep. Yep. So they, they were just, they were it. Nokia was once the global leader in mobile phones with its devices being like widely adopted, not just like where they were, which I believe is Finland. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. They're Finnish, which I thought they were a Japanese company because of how widespread Nokia was wrong. Yeah. Uh, it is, but they were scalable. They were create like catering to so many diverse markets and we're on like the cutting edge of consumer preferences. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they knew what the consumers were asking for and they were so good at their hardware. Okay. Hardware and features were their strength. Nokia's corporate culture though, was deeply entrenched in like that, that hardware engineering heritage um, where they focused on that hardware way more than they focused on software. See where we're going here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the user experience, which today, when the smartphone started coming in, became a software thing, not a hardware thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know I'm, I'm trying to stay 30,000 foot view here, but, um, the company had to adapt. And during this adaptation, uh, and I, I'm not going to get too deep into the story, look it up, but during this adaptation, they tried to adapt by bringing a culture into a culture. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they went with Microsoft on a software perspective to develop a hardware software uh, smartphone where they would be able to take the best of both worlds and make it happen. <clears throat> and you've heard in our one of our other podcasts, this did not go well. Okay. Mm-hmm. It did not go well. They had totally different cultural perspectives. In fact, I would say Nokia's cultural perspectives pre-going to this merger were unbelievable. They were unbelievable cultural perspectives, but they let up. They, they sacrificed their culture at some level to allow for this innovation to come in. And what ended up happening was losing top talent, the inability to truly work together between those siloed divisions and to take this hardware and software mentality and come out with some amazing product. That's why if I said, hey, what have you got the new Nokia smartphone? That's not something ever said. Okay. (laughs) Said no one ever. (laughs) Okay. Now the matrix looks stupid, right? And now the matrix looks like it's a 1980s movie that didn't get out of anything. And We know today they didn't, they didn't make it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, this was a cultural thing. This was a cultural issue with a leader. This was a cultural issue with not seeing top talent for what they were. This was an issue with having the wrong vision or a lack of vision or a vision that jumped from place to place to place very quickly. And it burned people out. This was a place where the accountable communication was not happening because we First off, not only did you bring two cultures together in business culture, you literally brought two different uh, national cultures that value things very differently Uh and did not take that into consideration. Or if you did, took it very weakly into consideration. So the potential, like Nokia underestimated the potential that could have been happening by this. And they initially dismissed it as like a niche market or a niche market. But Apple, Samsung, all these other innovators came in and took up the whole market. And now Nokia has very little touch in that market. In fact, I think they're more of an R&D company at this point with certain hardwares. And I think they're even some of their revenue sourcing is coming up with patents and then selling them off, right? Like, or leasing their patents out and stuff. So I don't want to dig too much more into this, this story. We love this story. We're going to highlight this story more and more, but I need, I need everyone to see that this was the miss. The miss was that they even had a good culture. I think they did. And I, I've still got more I need to dig in on this. But I think before, pre all of this, they did have a good culture. They had misses and probably the accountable communication area, maybe early on as they were not jumping on some 
like product based scalable things. They weren't diving into some of those and they weren't keeping accountable on that. But then they missed hard. Okay. And it made them from being the top global name to forgotten. Yeah. That's what's at risk here. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're saying here when we're talking about this idea of scalability is that the present doesn't define where things are going to go in the future. Everybody's at risk. Like we would sit here and we would think, Blake, like I can't imagine a world without Amazon. But because Amazon has built in these scalable features and scalable teams that they're currently still growing and they're currently still scaling. Right. But if you look at like a Walmart or like a Blockbuster, you can see the stall there. Right. Like there was a time where it was just like, I can't imagine a weekend without Blockbuster as being being a part yeah. of it wow. or even or even movie theaters. Yeah. Right. Like at this at the point now where it's like, why would I go spend all this money to sit in a crowded room with people who may or may not be sick with something that I might catch? Yeah. You know, uh, with sticky floors and uncomfortable chairs when I can just lay on my couch and watch it for less money. Like it's, there's so many different things we see like that where they get so short-sighted that they can't see uh, the potential future. And it's not it's just about the potential future, as we discussed early with the the product, uh, or, you know, or the, the sales item or, or the service that you're providing. It has way more to do with the people that are going to support it. It's the infrastructure yeah. that, will with, that will withhold uh, or that will be able to sustain the scalability, right? Like if you, if, if you have this massive growth and scalability, but you don't have the people to support it, it's not going to last very long. Yeah. Right. And so that's what we're talking about here when we're talking about scalability. And so next episode, we want to get into the, this question. You're probably asking yourself now, well, what do I, what do, I do about it? What do, what do we do about this? So I don't end up like a Nokia or a Xerox or Yahoo uh, or Blockbuster. There are data points yeah. that, 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 that you can assess on a regular basis to be able to ask yourself the question, are you scalable and get an accurate answer? And we talked about some of those early on, but uh, in this episode, but next episode, we're going to kind of really break down those data points uh, into a formula that we believe will help you answer the question. Are you scalable? You have anything to add to that, Blake? Yeah, just absolutely. That there are so many people who don't think culture is quantifiable. Hmm. Just could not disagree more. It is very quantifiable if you look for the right things. Yeah. This formula that we're talking about that helps you see if you're scalable is not going to hit again. The is your product going to last in the market? You've got it. This those are permission to play kind of things. But what this formula is going to focus on is do you have the team? Do you have the processes? Do you have the right stuff and the right variables to make sure that when you go through your first part of saying, is my product or service scalable? Are we in the right place to start scaling? That you don't go, this is the worst because you entrepreneur know what I'm talking about. The worst thing is having the product or the service that could be the thing that changes the world and not having the people to do it. That's worse. I would rather have a shit product that's going to fall out of the market than have a great one that that will never get legs because I don't have the people to do it and the right people who are just as hungry for seeing the success as you are. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So that's what we're going to dive into next time on the Culture Based Podcast. We're going to continue this series, Are You Scalable? And we're going to talk about these data points as we explain a formula that will actually help you quantify the culture of your team and know and answer the question, are you scalable? We'll be back next time, episode 42, to continue the series, Are You Scalable? on the Culture Based Podcast. 